Hello and welcome back everyone. I picked up this Mazda Fure in the new mystery packs the other day and thought I'd make a custom from one. I really like the way this car looks. Even the Mattel version looks pretty good. They seem to have gotten most of the proportions right, which is difficult to do. My plan for this car is to make a few small improvements and repaint. Mattel went with a race car look, which is what this car is. But I'm going to change that up a little bit and give it my own personal flair. So of course the first thing I'll do is drill out the rivets and take the car apart. I originally thought the wing would be attached to the interior plastic as they are the same color. However, it turns out the two are separate parts. I'm surprised Mattel didn't go with a different color interior plastic since the car doesn't have a red interior. I suppose the interior plastic and wing are done on the same mold. Anyway, after the car is apart, I'll remove the paint with aircraft paint remover. I want to remove these two blank vent areas in the front to give the car some added dimensions. To do this, I'm going to use a Dremel with a round burr tool. There are two raised areas inside of the car that represent these vents. I can slowly cut away material around these areas with the Dremel. Using a dental tool, I can score and remove material from the front until I cut these sections out. Cleanup can be done with very small diamond needle files. Here's how it looks after I was done. With the base and wheels on, this area will be dark and give a more realistic look. I would have loved to have removed the other small areas you can see here, but I don't have files that small, and plus poking a hole on top would let light into the bottom part and destroy the illusion anyway. Next, you can see a mold line running across the hood of this car. I need to remove this line. To do so, I'll first start with a file to remove the largest portions and then move to 400 grit sandpaper, the results of which you can see here, and then to 1000 grit, which I'll go over the entire car with. With everything sanded down, I can now prime the body. I chose to go with an acrylic gunmetal gray by Vallejo. I've really been enjoying these acrylic metal colors. All of them come airbrush ready and are simple to apply with good coverage. The best part is the clear coat we will apply later will not change the color or look of the paint. This is a big issue if you've ever messed around with metal paints. Most shiny paints, including these, are delicate. You have to apply some overcoat to protect them. The problem is once you apply the clear coat, the shiny surface disappears on many paints, but not on these, or at least not on any that I have tried so far. So once the paint is dry, I'll move to protect it with some gloss clear coat and then set that aside to cure for a couple days. In the meantime, I can work on the interior. Mattel chose to go with a red color interior. I'm going to paint this black and then rub some of it off to reveal the red plastic underneath. I'll seal the interior with a matte clear coat. I want to use matte because the dash will be underneath and next to a shiny windshield and body. This gives the illusion of leather or some other material for the dash and thus adds to the realism of the final look. For the windshield itself, I will mask off and paint a black band across the top to act as a sunscreen. While you can see it really well with this white background, it will be hardly noticeable once the car is put back together. So it's been a couple days now and the clear coat is cured. I now want to look at applying some decals. I threw around a lot of different ideas but settled on this dry transfer decal. The real car was a work of art with all of its curves. And I really wanted to go that route instead of the race car look that Mattel went with. This dry transfer decal with all of its fine swirls and curls seems appropriate. The decal also has flames in it, which if you know the history of this car is also appropriate. After applying the decals to the front and back, I begin the process of burying them under a clear coat. This is the first coat of five total coats that I'll apply. Each coat has a three hour dry time before the next coat is applied. Another reason I chose these decals was the fact that the color worked well with the red plastic of the wing. However, the wing is all red, and to cut it back some, I'll mask off the top and paint the rest black. When the paint is dry, I'll clear coat with gloss clear coat. So here the body is after about four days of cure time. I'm now ready to start polishing the clear coat. To do this, I'll use a cotton polishing wheel. These are not the polishing wheels that you get in the Dremel kits. These are much softer and will keep you from wearing through the paint. The compound I'm using is just polishing compound you buy at the auto parts store to polish the paint on a real car. The trick to this is to keep moving and to stay away from sharp edges. Here's what the body looks like after I was done polishing. If you're careful, you can remove surface issues like orange peel with this tool. If it's really bad, you can use a more abrasive compound. 
Just take care to note that you can also destroy your paint job in seconds with this tool if you're not careful. With the body done, I can now turn my attention to the base. I like the wheels that Mattel used, but I really think this car needs a more supercar type look. So I chose to use these new wheels that Mattel came out with. That sawtooth look seems appropriate for this type of car and the look I'm going for. I know a lot of customizers use real riders on most of their customs, but I couldn't find any that I actually thought looked as good as these do. If you know of some that would look better, please let me know below. I can always change them out. Okay, I want to give the back of this car some detail. If you Google this car, you'll see a lot of conceptual art showing the tail lights and headlights to be a sort of LED matrix embedded in the fins. I don't think the real car had this, but I think that would look really cool in the back. To reproduce this, I'll first paint the back red and then clear coat over that with gloss clear coat. When that dries, I will then come back and paint over the red with black. I will then use a mini Q-tip to remove the black from the tips of the fins. After I have everything the way I like it, I can then clear coat with matte clear coat and let dry. Around the exhaust, I'll use a silver Sharpie. After that is dry, the car is ready to put back together. So I've been making videos for a while now, and with that knowledge, I'm going to try and answer some questions before they're asked. Why didn't I paint in the headlights? I didn't paint in the headlights because I don't think this car has headlights. Also, the areas where you might paint them in is so small, I doubt I could get them to look uniform anyway. How did I take the car apart? Watch my video on Redline Restoration How To for details on how to take the cars apart and put them back together. Where do you buy the cotton polishing wheels? I get them off of Amazon. Search for Dremel Cotton Buffing Wheels. Where can I get the small Q-tips? They're sold at any hobby shop. When will Mad Max 5 Part 3 be out? Soon. Alright, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you want to see more customs like this, let me know below. As always, thanks for watching. Catch you guys next time.